So the details of the Democratic debates have been released. Um, it's going to be two nights because there's so many candidates that, you know, they have to break it up over two nights. I mean, if they really wanted every candidate on stage, they'd probably have to do like a four night debate. But some of them are so massively irrelevant that they're not even going to participate in the debates. Um, so let me show you this first graphic here. This is the first Democratic debate. This is night one. It's Wednesday, June 26th at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And uh, let's go through it. We got Cory Booker, Julian Castro, Bill de Blasio. I don't know how he um, made the debate so quickly. He just announced his campaign. I don't know how he hit the number of individual donors. Uh, John Delaney, Tulsi Gabbard, Jay Inslee, Amy Cloudboot Jar, Bet on My Stork, Tim Ryan, and Elizabeth Warren. So what to look for in this debate? Well, first of all, you know, you got Tulsi Gabbard and you got Elizabeth Warren. Those are the two candidates of all these candidates that um, I like. Now, there's degrees in terms of how much I like them. And um, they obviously they have their upsides and they have their downsides. But generally speaking, uh, if I had to vote in a general election for Tulsi or Elizabeth Warren, I have no problem doing that whatsoever. Uh, and I do it with a smile on my face. So it's basically going to be them versus the rest of them. Um, here's what I expect. Cory Booker is going to do some, you know, dad-isms. Because, <laughs> uh, funny enough, he's not a dad, but he's going to do his dad-isms and his corny jokes. And then, along with his corniness, he'll also try to d be fake profound, which is something I'm really looking forward to. Because uh, it's always hilarious, and I like to make fun of it. But expect him to, you know, serve you a, a platitude and cliche sandwich, and uh, you can get ready to laugh. Julian Castro will be fakely smiling the entire time. Bill de Blasio will look like a Yeti on stage because he's roughly seven foot six. Um, I don't expect any of those three I just named to really perform well. Of those three, probably the one who will perform the best is Bill de Blasio. But Bill de Blasio, in my mind, is just a fraud, and he's a fraud because he pretends to be this super far lefty guy. Meanwhile, in 2016, he actively supported Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders in the primary. So it shows you he's a rank political actor. He didn't even do, you know, the less egregious thing of, like, staying out of it like Elizabeth Warren did. Now, I still have criticisms of that, but obviously it's worse to, like, actively support Hillary over Bernie. So, you know, that that's always the thing that pops in my mind as soon as anybody mentions Bill de Blasio, because he's going to pretend like he's this, you know, flaming lefty. And it's like, are you kidding me, man? You're It's all political calculation nonsense. Um, John Delaney is going to get a, a bump of roughly zero percentage points after this debate. Um, he has the personality of a wet paper towel. <laughs> it's like watching paint dry when you listen to him talk. The most recent story we covered of him is when he was given that speech and he was going after Medicare for All at the California Democrats convention and everybody was booing him. Uh, that is the proper response. And there will be a lot of eye rolling when he talks. Um, Tulsi, I expect her to do a fantastic job. Um, if I was advising Tulsi, I would give her a little bit of advice to um, let it fly. Let it fly. Like, there's no reason to be calculated or even be calm. If I was Tulsi Gabbard, I would tell her, like, no, you need to you need to make a splash here. And the way you make a splash is to sound as unpolitician-like as humanly possible because Tulsi's right on a lot of the substance. So just smack him in the face with that. Be brash. Be aggressive. Be arrogant. It'll work. It'll work because you'll make a name for yourself. You'll stand out. And obviously she has political courage because she, you know, stood up for Julian Assange, for example, um, Edward Snowden. So she's willing to say things that other Democrats are not willing to say. She's willing to boldly stand up against war, for example, which is not something the others on stage would ever do. So um, I think she's going to do well, but I would tell her you got to be aggressive. You got to be as aggressive as you possibly can be. That would be my advice to Tulsi. But I do think she's going to do well. Uh, Jay Inslee, Yawnfest, Amy Cloudboot Jar. Oh, God, I'll fall asleep literally halfway through her speaking. Bet on my stork is going to somehow one up um, Cory Booker 
with looking like a politician and doing platitudes and cliches. Tim Ryan is going to come across as very angry, and um, he's going to try to uh, pave that centrist path, and I think he's going to spend some time attacking, you know, further left candidates on stage like Elizabeth Warren and Tulsi Gabbard. Now, Elizabeth Warren, that's, that's the interesting one. That's the question mark as to how she'll do, because... For those of you who don't know, one of the main reasons Elizabeth Warren got into politics was to, like, go after Joe Biden because she thought he was far too centrist and uh, she criticized him heavily and in a very pointed way. So Elizabeth Warren is no fan of Joe Biden. And notice Elizabeth Warren is not on stage with Joe Biden. So, you know, I, I don't know. Was that possibly some some uh, DNC fuckery? Could have been. Could have been. They claim, like, no, you know, they didn't rig the debates. Does anybody put it past them to actually sit down and make these decisions? No, of course. I think they they would definitely do that. It, it wouldn't... I wouldn't be surprised, okay? So, she's not on stage with Joe Biden. I think Joe Biden actually got a little bit lucky in, in that sense because I think she would really, you know, go right at him. And I think it would, it would work because she actually doesn't like him. So he may have lucked out in that sense. Now, Elizabeth Warren, you know, the thing is, how's her personality? It's okay. It's okay. But it's possible she does really well in the debate if she focuses on policy and she finds a way to get her point across quickly. And it's possible she does bad in the debate and she just doesn't stand out because she's also very soft-spoken and she also... Sometimes meanders, man. Keep it real. Sometimes it takes her quite a bit of time to say something that she could say in, you know, two sentences. And she'll draw it out for a paragraph and a half. So I'm interested to see how she does. She has been surging in the polls recently, and I think she's surging the polls because she's been releasing a lot of policy proposals when it comes to the economy and their policy proposals that poll well. So I'm very interested to see how she does. But in my mind... The big winners, I think what we're going to see is... Mm, I don't know, it's a tough one. It's a tough one, because I just don't know how Elizabeth Warren is going to do. I think Tulsi will do well, but I think she has to be aggressive in order to make a name for herself and not, you know, do any sort of political calculation, which oftentimes she doesn't, so she might be good in that sense, but she, I would tell her you have to be aggressive. I think that it, it'll, be a, it'll be a random surprise, man. I think that we might be walking away going, like, Bill de Blasio held his own. Like, there's going to be a, a surprise. It ain't going to be Cory Booker. It ain't going to be Bet on My Stork. It ain't going to be Julian Castro. It's possible to Elizabeth Warren. Um, I think I think there's a chance that Bill de Blasio will, you know, perform better in the debates than he is as a candidate. Now, will that reflect in the polls afterwards in terms of him getting an actual bump from the debates? That's yet to be seen, and honestly, even if he does get a bump, what are we talking about? He goes from 0% to 3%? Wow. But yeah, I think it's going to be a random surprise winner of that first debate. Um, I think either Tulsi or like Bill de Blasio will stand out, and then also Elizabeth Warren is a 50-50 proposition. In order for her to, to come away looking good, she has to be solely focused on policy and she has to be more snappy as opposed to professorial. So we'll see. That's what I think for the first night. Now, the second night, take a look at this. We have... Um, this is at 9 o'clock again, June 27th. Michael Bennett. What? <laughs> I barely know who that is, and I cover politics for a living. Michael Bennett, Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Kirsten Gillibrand, or excuse me, I messed up her name, Kirsten Jellobrand, Kamala Harris, uh, The Breakfast Cereal, John Hickenlooper, America's Dad, Bernie Sanders, Eric Swalwell, Marianne Williamson, and Andrew Yang. Um, so this is debate night number two. Now, I have some more bold predictions for this, okay? Here's who I guarantee you will be a total and utter loser, and it will be embarrassing. Eric Swalwell and John Hickenlooper. They will perform worse in this debate than anybody has ever performed in the history of debating. 
All right, that's a little bit of an overstatement, but not really. Like, in fact, if that does happen, I will not be surprised in the slightest. So, <laughs> I, I really think they're just going to shit the bed so bad that people are going to be like, you need to drop out. Like, you don't get it. You're embarrassing, man. Like, uh, Howard Schitt's. Howard Schitt's apparently, like, he kind of got the message, and he's like, mm, okay, this is kind of embarrassing. I should probably, you know. He, he said, like, oh, I have to get surgery or something, and so I'm off the campaign trail. And that's, I think that's a roundabout way of saying, like, I got it, you know, you guys don't want me, done here. Uh, the breakfast cereal Hickenlooper is Howard Schultz without even that minimal amount of self-awareness. <laughs> so it's gonna be, the breakfast cereal's gonna flop miserably. Eric Swalwell might even flop worse than the breakfast cereal Hickenlooper. Um, Pete Buttigieg is gonna annoy the shit out of me. Uh, in fact, he might annoy me more than any of the other candidates on stage, because at least I laugh at Hickenlooper, at least I laugh at Swalwell for being so bad. Buddha Judge loves the sound of his own voice. Now, I'm not criticizing based on that alone, because, I mean, who are we kidding? Do I love the sound of my own voice? I think so. Um, but, actually, I hate the sound of my own voice, but I talk enough where people would think I love the sound of my own voice. But anyway, um... Yeah, Buddha Judge is gonna be so fake politician-y that I'm gonna, like, feel like I need to take a shower after listening to him. Um, here's who's gonna do well, I think. Bernie's gonna knock it out of the park, because Bernie's America's dad, and he's really great in debates. I, I actually think Andrew Yang is gonna really do well, and here's, here's a, a bold prediction. I think Andrew Yang is gonna do so well in the debate that he's gonna get a big, um, uptick in support. So, like, you know what I said with Bill de Blasio in the, in the last debate? Okay, I think he might actually get a, get a tiny bump, maybe, but I think he's going to perform better than people think, or some random candidate's going to perform better than people think. I'm so confident that Yang is going to do better than anybody expects, and he's going to get a bump that, you know, it'll make your head spin. <laughs> I didn't know how to end that sentence, so I had to throw something on the end of it. Um... I, I'm just convinced he's going to do really well, and it's he's going to do so well that it's actually going to reflect in the polling after the fact. So I think Bernie's going to do well, Andrew Yang is going to do well. Shockingly, I actually think Kamala Harris and, Ke and Kirsten Gillibrand have the potential to do pretty well. Because people don't know the details of their records, and they can come across as being further left than they are. And as long as they do that, and they do it in a way that is convincing enough to people who don't know this stuff in detail, I think they could do pretty well. Or maybe one of them does pretty well. Um, and the other prediction is, Hansy Uncle Joseph is going to shit the bed. Now listen, Hansy Uncle Joseph is actually a good debater. But here's what I mean by that. He's good at one-on-one -on -one debating, and he's good at debating with Republicans. <laughs> he destroyed Sarah Palin in the vice presidential debates, um, and he destroyed Paul Ryan in the vice presidential debates, and I actually think if it was Biden versus Trump, Biden would beat Trump in those debates. I mean, I think that he has, like, no ideology, and he's really vapid, or, you know, maybe does have an ideology, but it's, it's centrism and it's corporatism, but he can dress it up enough where... He can make Trump look like the fucking idiot he is. He is good at debating one-on-one. -on -one. From everything I've seen, he's good at debating one-on-one. -on -one. He's not that great at debating when it's a stage full of people. He's just not. You know, go, he's run for president roughly 312 times already, and he got destroyed every single time. That's not an accident. That's not an accident. He doesn't stand out when there's a whole bunch of people on stage, and he'll walk into a minefield... And won't even realize he's walking into a minefield. He just did it the other day. Again, and we'll cover that in a little bit, but he keeps shoving his foot in his mouth. He's bragging about working with segregationists. What? What? How dumb are you? Read the room, dipshit. So, I think he's going to do really bad. I think Hansy Uncle Joseph is going to do very poorly in this debate, and I think that's going to reflect in the polls and he's going to tank. So, those are my debate predictions. You're going to have a surprise stand out in the first debate, maybe a Bill de Blasio or somebody like that. Um, uh, and Elizabeth Warren's a 50-50 proposition, in my opinion. I think Tulsi will do well, but she has to be aggressive. Um, and in the second debate, I, I think Bernie's going to do well. I think Andrew Yang is going to do well. And I think um, Hansy Uncle Joseph is going to flop. You might have Kamala or Kirsten Gillibrand do well. And uh, the breakfast cereal Hickenlooper 
and Eric Swalwell is just they're going to it's going to be so funny watching them flop that I might actually rewatch the debate like three or four times so I could laugh. But anyway, that's my debate breakdown. Again, we got um, Wednesday, June 26th at 9, Thursday, June 27th at 9. I will be live tweeting the shit out of these debates and then after the debates, I'll do uh, you know, specific seg- segment breakdowns which will be fun. This is my favorite thing about the political season. I loved it in 2016. I love it now. So I'm looking forward to it.